Reading through the Bible in one year, February 2nd, Genesis 36, Esther 5, 1 through 6, 13, Matthew 26, 6 through 35, and Acts 27, 1 through 12. There we go. These are the generations of Esau, that is Edom. Esau took his wives from the Canaanites, Adah, the daughter, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, uh, Aholabama, daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibi and the Hivite, and Basimath, um, Ishmael's daughter, the sister of Nebaioth. And Adah bore Esau, so I bore to Esau, Eliphaz, Basimath bore Reuel, and Aholabama bore Jeus, Jalem, and Korah. These are the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, um, and all the members of his household, his livestock and all his beasts and all his property that he acquired in the land of Canaan. And he went into a land away from his brother Jacob, for their possessions were too great for them to dwell together. The land of their sojournings could not support them because of their livestock. So Esau settled in the hill country of Seir. Esau is Edom. These are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons. Eliphaz, the daughter of Adah, uh, the wife of Esau. Uh, Reuel, uh, the son of Basimath, wife of Esau. And Eliphaz, sorry, the sons of Eliphaz were uh, Timon, Omar, Zepho, Katam, and Kenaz. Timnah was a concubine of Eliphaz, Esau's son, so she, and she bore Amalek to Eliphaz. These are the uh, sons of Adah, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Reuel, Nahath, Sarah, sorry, Zerah, Shema, and Mizah. These are the sons of Basimath, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Aholabama, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion, Esau's wife. She bore uh, to Esau, Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the chiefs of the sons of Esau. That this, there's a lot of repeating in this one, just so you know. These are the chiefs of the sons of Esau. The sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn of Esau, uh, the chiefs of Teman, so the chiefs Teman, Omar, Zepho, Kenaz, Korah, Getam, and Amalek of the Amalekites, and the Korathites and the Temanites, I believe. Uh, these are the chiefs of the, sorry, of Eliphaz in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Ada. These are the sons of Reuel, Esau's son, the chiefs Nahath, um, Zerod, Shammah, and Mizah. These are the chiefs of the real um, in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Basimath, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Aholabama, um, Esau's wife. Uh, the chiefs Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the chiefs of Aholabama, uh, the daughter of Ana, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Esau, that is Edom, um, and these are their chiefs. These are the sons of um, Seir the Horite, the inhabitants of the land. Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Ana, De Dishan, Azer, and Dishan. Or Dishan, Dishan, Dishan. Ah. Oh, there we go. This is, these are the chiefs of the Horites, um, the sons of Seir in the land of Edom. The sons of Lotan were Horai and Hemem, and Lotan's sister was Timnah. These are the sons of Shobal, um, Alvan, Mahat... Manahath, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. These are the sons of Zibion. Aya, Ana. He is the Ana who found the hot springs in the wilderness as he pastured the donkeys of Zibion, his father. These are the children of Ana. Dishon and Aholabama, the daughter of Ana. These are the sons of Dishon. He, uh, Hemden, Eshbon, Ithran, and Charon. These are the sons of Ezer. Bilhan, Zavan, or Zavan, and Achan. Uh, these are the sons of Dishan, Uz, and Aran. These are the chiefs of the Horites, the chiefs of Lotan, um, Shobal, Zibion, Ana, Dishan, uh, Ezer, and Dishan. These are the chiefs of the Horites, chief by chief, in the land of Seir. These are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any other king uh, reigned over the Israelites. Bela, the son of Beor, reigned in Edom, the name of his city being uh, Dinhaba. Bela died, and Zobab, the son of Zerah, of Basra, reigned in his place. Jobab died, and Husham, the son of the, sorry, the, of the land of the Temanites, reigned in his place. Husham died, and um, Hadad, the son of Bedad, I read that wrong. 
Hushem died and Hadad reigned in his... I'm losing my spot here. And Hadad... Yeah, the son of Bedad, who defeated the... Uh, who defeated Midian in the country of Moab, right in his place. The name of his city being Avith. Hadad died, and Samla of Masreka reigned in his place. Samla died, and Shaul of Rehoboth reigned in, uh, of Rehoboth on the Euphrates reigned in his place. Shaul died, and Ben Hanan, son of Akbor, reigned in his place. Ben Hanan, son of Akbor, died, and Hadar reigned in his place. The name of his city being Pau. His wife was Mehethabel. Sorry, Mehetabel, the daughter of Metred, daughter of Mezahab. These are the names of the chiefs of Esau, according to their clans and the dwelling places, by their names. The chiefs of Timna, Alva, um, Jetheth, there we go, Oholabama, um, Elah, Pinon, Kinez, Timan, Mizbar, Magdiel, and Imram. Sorry, Iram. These are the chiefs of Edom, that is Esau, the father of Edom, according to the dwelling places in the land of their possession. That was a lot of names. And now on to Esther. So now Esther is finally finding a way to, to talk to um, the king, um, Ahasuerus, about what's going on and about the fact that her people are being, um, whew, excuse me, her people are being persecuted Um and trying to find a way to get them out of it. So here we go. On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the king's palace in front of the king's quarters. While the king was sitting on his royal throne outside, sorry, inside the throne room opposite the entrance of the palace. When the king saw Esther standing in the court, she won favor in his sight, and he held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther approached and touched the tip of the scepter. And the king said, uh, said to her, What is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given to you, even to half my kingdom. And Esther said, If it please the king, let the king and Haman come today to a feast that I have prepared for the king. Then the king said, Bring Haman quickly, so that that we may do as Esther had asked. So the king and Haman came to the feast that Esther had prepared. Um, And as they were drinking wine after the feast, the king said to Esther, What is your wish? It shall be granted to you. What is your request? Even half my kingdom. It shall be fulfilled. Then Esther answered, My wish and my request is, if I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my wish and fulfill my request, let the king and Haman come to the feast that I will prepare uh, for them, and tomorrow I will do as the king has said. And Haman went out that day, joyful and glad of heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he neither rose nor trembled before him, he was filled with wrath against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman restrained himself and went home. And he sent and brought his friends and his wife Zeresh. And Haman recounted to them the splendor of his riches, the number of his sons, and all the promotions with which the king had honored him, and how he had advanced him above the officials and the servants of the king. Then Haman said, Even Queen Esther, let no one but me come with the king to the feast she prepared. Tomorrow I'm invited by her uh, together with the king. Yet all this is worth nothing to me, so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then his wife Zeresh and all his friends said to him, Let a gallows, fifty cubits high be made, that's seventy-five feet. And in the morning, tell the king to have Mordecai hanged upon it. Then go joyfully with the king to the feast. This idea pleased Haman, and he had the gallows made. On that night, the king could not sleep, and he gave orders... um, to bring the book of memorable deeds, the Chronicles, um, and they were read before the king. Because if there's anything you need to knock you out, it's history books of stuff that you don't care about. Um, and it was found written how Mordecai had told about uh, Big Thana and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs who guarded the threshold, and who had sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. And the king said, what honor or distinction has been bestowed on Mord- Mordecai for this? The king's young men who attended him said, Nothing has been done for him. And the king said, Who's in the court? Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the king's palace to speak to the king about having a Mordecai hanged on the gallows uh, that he had prepared for him. And the king's young men told him, Haman is there, sitting in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. So Haman came, and the king said to him, What shall we do to the man whom the king delights to honor? Haman said to himself, Whom would the king delight to honor more than me? 
And Haman said to the king, For the man whom the king delights to honor, let royal robes be brought, which the king has worn, and the horse that the king has ridden, and on whose head a royal crown is set. And let the robes and the horse be handed over to one of the king's most noble officials. Let them dress the man whom the king delights to honor, and let the uh, let them lead him on the horse through the square of the city, proclaiming before him, "Thus shall it be done to the man before whom, sorry, the man whom the king delights to honor." The king said to Haman, "Hurry, take the robes and the horse as you have said, and do so to, do so to Mordecai the Jew who sits at the king's gate. Leave out nothing that you have mentioned." Yeah, basically Haman's worst day ever. He's like, really? That guy, the one who refuses to worship me for my splendor? He was so in love with himself that he could imagine that the, the king was talking about anybody but him. All right? You're so vain. You probably think this proclamation is about you. All right? So Haman took the robes and the horse, and he dressed Mordecai and led him through the square of the city, proclaiming before him, Thus it shall be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Then Mordecai returned to the king's gate. But Haman hurried to his house, mourning and with his head covered. And Haman told his wife Zeresh and all his friends everything that had happened to him. Then his wise men and his wife Zeresh said to him, If Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall, is one of the Jewish people, you will not overcome him but will surely fall before him. We'll get more to that story tomorrow. Okay, Matthew 26. Now, when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment. Now, these alabaster flasks are meant such, or made such that when you, you, so you have to break it to open it, right? Um, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at table. And the disciples saw it, they were indignant. Why this waste? Because again, to them, yes, Jesus was an important person. Yes, he was the son of God, but that could also just mean that he is someone who was uh, sent by God, a great prophet, right? He is the Christ, meaning the, the one who was sent by God also, right? The one who was to come, but they still kind of think that he's going to be just a military or a political leader. Right? Even though he's told them all of these other things. We're going to see some of that in a minute here. right? But to them, they're like, why this waste? This is ridiculously expensive stuff. It could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. And pouring this ointment on my body, she has done to prepare me for burial. Truly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver, which is the same price as a, the price of a slave. Um, and from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray him. Now, on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher has said, sorry, the teacher says, My time is at hand, and I will prepare the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they direct say they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. They were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish uh, with me will betray me. As a, sorry, the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for him if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. This is a note. You have said so means you know it to be true. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink, uh, drink of it, all of you. This is, the, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, many, 
for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of the fr- sorry of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You all will fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. It's easy to say that now until the persecution comes. And this is what they're going to learn. Acts 27, 1 through 12. When it was decided that we should sail for Italy, because again, they're going to Rome, right? So that he can stand before Caesar. They delivered Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan cohort named Julius. In embarking in a ship of Adamantium, um, sorry, Adramidium, there we go. Um, bit of, <laughs> like, I got a little Wolverine thrown in there. That is not at all what the ship is from. Um, so it's Adramidium, uh, which is about to set sail to the ports along the coast of Asia, we put to sea, accompanied by Aristarchus, a uh, Macedonian from Thessalonica. The next day we put in at Sidon, and Julius treated Paul kindly and gave him to uh, leave to go to his friends and be cared for. And putting out to sea from there, we sailed under the lee of Cyprus because the winds were against us. When we had sailed across the open sea and along the coast of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra in Lycia. Um, there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing for Italy and put us on board. We sailed slowly for a number of days and arrived with difficulty off uh, Nidus. Um, and the sorry, and as the wind did not allow us to go any farther, we sailed under the lee of Crete off Salmone. Coasting along it, we with difficulty we came to a place called Fair Havens, near which uh, was the city of Lycia. Since much time had passed and the voyage was now dangerous because even the fast was already over. Paul advised them, saying, Sirs, I perceive that the voyage will be with injury and much loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. But Centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than to what Paul said. And because the harbor was not suitable to spend the winter in, the majority decided to put out to sea from there on the chance that somehow we, they could reach Phoenix, the harbor of Crete, facing both southwest and northwest, and spend the winter there. Tomorrow. We go into the uh, end of that decision. Behold the word of the Lord.